uh, on the front page of the Times, blindfolded Russian soldiers taken, uh, basically taken uh, hostage, not hostage, but, but, but captured by Ukrainian troops uh, on their own home soil, something I suppose I don't think we thought we'd ever see. No, it's something we haven't seen since the 1940s no. when, when the Nazis invaded. Um, I mean, it's, it's extraordinary. I mean, what happened is Tuesday of last week, so eight days ago, um, a group of Ukrainian soldiers crossed the border from Ukraine into Russia, took the Russians completely by surprise. Yeah. Um, you know, there are now as many as 10,000 Ukrainian troops in Russia. They've gone about 20 miles into Russia across the border. They, they claim to control 386 square miles of territory. 200,000 local people have been evacuated. You know, it's, it's, it's absolutely enormous. Yeah, it is incredible. And I mean, I was asking somebody this just the other day, I and mean, what, what was the sort of the one thing that led um, Vladimir Zelensky to believe that he could do this successfully? Because it's not as though, as far as I know anyway, uh, they've had a, a large influx of, of, of new weapons or, you know, an influx of men uh, and, and, and uh, you know, a, a boost to the size of the army or anything. It's, it's quite a bold move, isn't it? I mean, it's an extraordinary bold move, but it's also been very, very cleverly thought out by, by the Ukrainians who have sort of proved over and over again just you know, quite how they can outsmart the Russians in this war, mm. which is, you know, they've clearly looked at the whole border area and there's a, there's a huge, long, long border between Ukraine and Russia. And for various reasons, they've identified this area as being particularly vulnerable because the defences there for various reasons are not as strong as they are at other parts of the border. Um, the military, whole military command structure is a little bit confused there. And also, I mean, in retrospect, it's quite interesting because there was a much smaller cross-border raid that happened in March of this year that was carried out by kind of Russian opposition fighters, just a small number of people that went a relatively small distance into, the, into Russia. And that now looks in retrospect to being kind of a recce mission so they could test how well the Russian, regular Russians responded. And on the basis of that, I think Ukrainians really decided you know, let's go for it. Right. And so um, is Russia a much weakened force now after all these months of war? I think, I, you know, I think the, the point about this operation is, is it's just an embarrassment mm. for Putin because the war generally has been going Russia's way. I mean, this is, you know, you should bear in mind, this is a few hundred miles from the main front. The main front is is further to the east and the Russians are doing well there. So this is a kind of a a diversionary tactic mm. that the Ukrainians are doing. But it's, you know, it's an embarrassment for Putin because, you know, as we said at the beginning, this is the first time since the 1940s that any foreign power has actually invaded Russia. Mm. And um, Putin's got to kind of explain it away to the people. Yeah, absolutely. And so he can't any longer kind of pretend that it's all going brilliantly because this is going to be popping up. But, I mean, how much of this will they see on the screens in Russia, I mean, in terms of uh, what he allows them to show? Um, I mean, it's... You know, they are playing it down. The Russians, if you look at Russian media, official Russian media, they're playing it down. There's this wonderful kind of Russian phrase, which I remember from my time working there. You know, the situation is complicated, but it's under control. Um, the problem now is that, you know, Russians, the internet isn't blocked in Russia. Ru ordinary Russians get information from all manner of sources, right. all manner of kind of channels on Telegram, social media, and so on. You know, and they can't hide what's going on, particularly given, as I said, you know, there have been 200,000 people evacuated. Those people have got relatives across Russia. They tell them what's been going on. You know, you can't... You know, this is not North Korea. Information travels yeah. in Russia. Yeah. I mean, I've never, I'm surprised to hear you say that, Peter, but it's a great line. You know, this is not North Korea. I mean, we say it here, but I didn't know you would say it about Russia. But, uh, but thank you very much indeed.